Got the angle pretty much the way I want it so we can give it a couple, couple more wax. Something a bit better. Here. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to put a handle on this uh, whole knee digger. It's a gardening tool where you sort of stick it in and go like this. It's one of my favorite uh, gardening tools. And actually this piece of metal I found in the backyard of the first house I ever bought. It was just like in the ground, almost like a magic gardening tool. And I've been using it ever since. I have a new one, of course, but I because <laughs> I'm always losing one, so it's good to have two. Uh, but anyway, this one, when I found it, the handle was rotted off. So I replaced the handle. And it's got what they call a... A rat tail tang, just sort of a pointy hard bit coming out the end. And the way I'm going to replace the handle is the same way I replace the handle where I put handles on things like files. Right? Because if a file, if I give an example, uh, a file has what's called a, a rat tail tang, right? Like that. Right? So there's a survival book I read once, and they said if you, know, if you have a knife that has this sort of tang and the handle breaks off, you just cut a piece of birch and pound the tang into the birch. Actually, this, I think this might be alder, but anyway, um, this is either birch or alder. They're hard to tell apart when they're young. Uh, anyway, uh, if you look in my uh, tools, you'll find that basically anything that has a tang that's in need of a handle has something like a piece of birch on the end. And uh, sometimes they last for a long, long time. Uh, with this tool, I leave it outside pretty much like six, seven months of the year. So, uh, you know, eventually it does work loose, but it does tend to stay on. And so, I'm going to do that right now in this video, just show you how easy that is to do. Uh, one thing you uh, want to do is get some of the uh, metal bear up again. So, what you're doing is you're, you're pounding it into a piece of green wood. And because that, that is to say wood that uh, hasn't been dried out. So I just went in the woods yesterday and cut these sticks uh, to, to use for this sort of thing here today. Uh, so it's green wood insofar as it's got water and so there's a moisture content in this wood. And what's going to happen is that the, when you pound this thing in, the, the metal will uh, uh, rust a bit and sort of glue itself in by virtue of that rust. Just, you think of rust as a bad thing, but you know that that rust. If you ever touch it, you can get a, a nice, smooth, clean piece of metal and let it rust a bit. It becomes abrasive. So that rust actually helps uh, hold it in place. So you just clean it up a little bit, so it can rust once you drive it. And that's good enough, right? So I haven't gone crazy here. I've just just scratched it up a little bit so I can see a bit of shine here or there. That's all you got to do. Now you got to grab your. Uh, your handle and you got to decide on uh, what diameter the handle should be. Uh, I find if you get any old sort of shovel handle, um, hold it with your hand and see how it fits in your hand to get a sense. So for me, if my, uh, which finger is this, my middle finger can touch the sort of meaty part of my hand, right, as long as it's touching I know it's the right size. So. Now it's different. I've got a, big, a fairly big hand, so I mean it's going to be different for you, but basically a, a shovel handle is a, a handle that's been the standard size for a handle, so that must be a good handle size. <laughs> it, must, it must be like, so what am I trying to say here? i got a stick here and I could use, this is probably be less likely to split, but it's kind of big. And when you're using a hand tool, I mean your, your hand fatigue is very important, right? So the, the, the more, uh, the bigger around the handle is, the more tired your hand's going to get. It's harder to hang on to something that's really big. Whereas if something's small and you get your hand right around it, wrap onto it really good, you can get a better grip. <coughs> so you can work with the tool longer and not get that handle fatigue. So looking around on this, I'm going to use, I'm going to try this one here. And uh, this piece here seems to have about that, you know, my, my middle finger is touching that, that muscle of my, the sort of base of the thumb, that muscle that controls the thumb. So for me that's the right size, and I see a fairly straight piece right along there. So let's cut that off. Now 
Now, one of the rules of thumbs with uh, doing this sort of thing is that one in every ten pieces will split. <laughs> so if it splits, you just try it again. Keep doing it. And another thing you can do is drill a bit of a hole in there to give it a little bit of room. If you're driving something really big in there, you might need that. It probably wouldn't hurt. But let's let's try this one without making the hole. Why birch is recommended, aside from the fact that it's nice and green, and probably the nature of the grain, is that the design of the bark on a birch, it's sort of wrapped around, and it's pretty strong. I mean, they make canoes and stuff out of that, right? So basically the bark is wrapped around. I mean, it's not wrapped around. It grew like that. But it holds it together, so it's less likely to split. And, uh, you know, a lot of logs, if you're trying to split logs, if you actually hit the axe right in the center, it's less likely to split than if you hit the axe near the side, right? So we're going to drive this in the center. It's going to want to split out. But if we're lucky and we've got the right piece here, this bark will keep it from uh, splitting out. So let, let me bring you over to the vise here and let's, let's give it a go. Oh, one, one more thing. Uh, so this one here has some uh, bumps, right? There's a bump right there. Right, and there's a little bit of a bump right there. And your inclination might be to, to get a knife and whittle that down. But uh, that will weaken the bark. Uh, so I found, uh, I should be doing this on, on the floor where there's less give, but I'm on camera here. Just sort of hit it with a hammer a bit. Any part that you think is above profile that might not feel comfortable in your hand. This is a good time of year to do this because you can just let it sort of sit for a while. I mean, you can use it right away. You can pound in and use it right away, but it's good to let it sit for a little bit. Let the wood adapt to the new uh, arrangement and uh, just have the thing uh, adapt to the situation. So anyway, let's bring it over to the vise here and uh, pound this thing in and see if it splits. All right, so here we are with the vise. I'm just going to open this up. Get a bit of a rag around this just to protect the wood a little bit. I got it sitting on the counter, so really it's not being, it's just being held uh, vertical by the vise. I'm not going to squeeze this in tight here, otherwise it might damage the bark, damage the wood, and so on. Okay, now I got this here, sort of wiggle it in a bit. See, I don't know if you can see that, but there's water coming out of there because the wood's green. Now, I mean, there's lots of different ways to do this. Move this to an angle that works for me. Um, but I found that if you put a vice grip around it, and uh, there's a hammer, just whack, whack that in. That's on good, all right. <laughs> there we go, that went in pretty good actually. Not quite sure how straight that stays. Yeah. That's in there. Now we should maybe give that just another, now that I got that pretty straight, give that another whack. And now I can put the the, the, uh, the metal directly in the vise because I got, got the angle pretty much the way I want it. So I can give that a couple, a couple more whacks. Something a bit better. There. Yeah, don't want to overdo it, but you can see, if you look there, let me get some light on this a bit better, better light. It's not split, I don't know how obvious that is, let me zoom in a bit. There's no split, it's not to say it won't, it's not to say it won't split over time, <laughs> nothing's guaranteed in life, 
but you can see in, in pounding that in it didn't split if I'm lucky it'll stay like that for the whole season so there you have it easy way to put a handle on something I mean I use the the vice method the vice grips method to pound down into the wood just because of camera angles and shooting a video if I wasn't doing this if you can get if you can get the actual metal part to be straight up and down you can just pound this thing down onto it right or if you attach it to a table you can pound it in I like it to be straight vertical because I can get it nice and straight the way I want anyways lots of different ways to do it. the general principle is shine it up a little get the metal shiny and drive it into a piece of green birch any kind of birch really uh, you want to have you know nice sort of unbroken bark because the bark is what's keeping it from splitting open but that's on there I mean I'm I'm reasonably strong I give that everything I, I mean of course this isn't the strongest way but if I uh, I don't know how much I can put on that but or put it another way here I got a big uh, big workbench here there's all kinds of stuff on it I got potatoes underneath this and other gear and hook onto it with this here I'm not going to pull any kind of soil or anything in the garden any harder than I just pulled this thing this thing must weigh at least at least a hundred pounds probably more than that uh, I add all kinds of weight to it so it doesn't move around while I'm working on it it's made out of two by sixes it's a fairly heavy bench so I'd say oh, yeah this this thing is at least a hundred pounds and uh, this didn't come out and I just drove it in there right so imagine after it's sort of rusted in place a little bit it'll stay on there so yeah if you've got that nice tool that you lost the handle to and it's been sort of hanging on the wall for years because you didn't really know what to do about it or you didn't know just go for a walk in the woods cut a branch off a birch tree make sure there's a nice sort of length of it that's reasonably straight with not too many knots and cut it off and drive a new handle onto it now after this is dried if it doesn't split or anything like that um, you can whittle this into a shape that you like if you want to do that uh, or you can just I just like to usually just leave the birch bark on because it has a a leather like feel uh, in the hand uh, sometimes uh, if you want you can add uh, a lot of handles so this is a straight handle right but if a handle has a sort of um, oval shape to it so it's, uh, it's basically thicker in the center of the palm it can sometimes be easier to hang on to it a lot of knives and things have that general shape where they sort of you know they're sort of fatter in the middle than they are on the ends right the hand seems to like that so uh, you can shape the wood into having that shape or you can just wrap some uh, rope like uh, oh, something like this bank line that sort of thing wrap a piece of rope around maybe just that much of the center you know an inch and a half and it'll basically be the inside of your palm and that'll bring the middle out a little bit might make it easier to hang on to I mean that's all a matter of preference and that sort of thing but uh, yeah you, you can do that and I do that sometimes with uh, uh, knives and things like that I don't know if I've got one uh, here so here's a knife I like to use when I go fishing right I just have it around my neck but you can see here that I've put a wrap around the middle I mean aside from just having some extra rope in case you, you get into trouble it just fits the palm nicely it's just less likely to come come out of your hand sort of thing right so instead of carving this wood into a you know sort of oval I'm using the wrong term but that sort of egg shape right sort of carving the wood you just bring out the middle a little bit and it this part is just going to fit in the center of the palm it just gives you that much better of a grip that knife is not coming loose it's not coming out um, so that's just another little trick you can do that with with your handle if if you like that this particular kind of uh, knot you can use to do wraps like this if people want me to do a video on that I can it's a really handy knot for making a nice so you can't really can't really tell where this knot begins and where it ends it's a particular kind of knot for doing that really neat knot um, if there's enough questions I'll, I'll show you how to do that knot all right so I hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe check out my podcast maritimegardening.com and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching <laughs>